There's one engineering role that nobody's hyping up, even though it might be the smartest move that you can make right now. This role pays well, while it has half the competition of all the other tech roles, and best of all, it is future-proof. Because without this role, up to 80% of AI projects fail. So what magic role is this? Well, it's data engineering. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, data engineering sounds boring. It's not as flashy as building AI agents or training models from scratch. But here's what I've learned working in my AI career. The engineers will understand data infrastructure are the ones that companies cannot function without. Here's a concrete example that you likely experience daily. Netflix's recommendation system saves them over a billion dollars per year in keeping subscriptions up and running. 80% of what people watch comes from these recommendations. But here's what most people don't know. In 2008, Netflix had a catastrophic database failure that took them down for three whole days. And that crisis became the catalyst for a complete infrastructure transformation. And seven years of data engineering work later, Netflix got systems in place that now process 500 plus billion events on a daily basis. Not weekly, not monthly, but daily. And that's what actually powers Netflix's AI solutions as well. It was the data infrastructure that made personalization at scale even possible in the first place. Nobody is able to create any interesting AI or machine learning solutions at scale without a data engineer, which could be you, being able to get the data into the right place at the right time. Garner predicts that 60% of AI projects will be abandoned in 2026, and leading industry reports find that a lot of AI project failures trace back to one root cause, data quality and infrastructure issues. Companies are pouring so much money into machine learning and AI initiatives, hiring a bunch of engineers, buying third-party tools, and then just watching everything collapse because nobody built the data foundation. And who can build the data foundation? Well, that's the data engineers, of course. And the same strong story for data engineers is at Spotify as well. In 2014, they acquired a company called the Echo Nest for $100 million. And not for an algorithm, but for a database analyzing 30 million songs with over a trillion data points. And that acquisition became the foundation for Discover Weekly, which has now generated over 100 billion streams. Today, Spotify processes 1.4 trillion data points every single day. They have over 100 engineers working on just data infrastructure. Discover Weekly, Spotify Wrapped, all those personalized playlists that people love, none of it exists without the data engineers who built the pipes first. Now, if you're wondering what technologies these companies actually use and what you would need to learn to break into data engineering, well, I'll break all of that down in my free AI starter kit, and the link is in the description down below. But first, let me explain why this role is so valuable right now. Well, an AI solution is only as good as the data. You can build the most sophisticated agent using the best models in the world, but if you cannot get the right business data to it, which must be clean, structured, and accessible, you might as well just use ChatGPT. There are so many companies running around trying to implement AI without any good data strategy, and they cannot answer you basic questions about where their data lives or how it flows to their systems. And that's exactly why most AI projects never reach production. Data engineers are the ones who make AI actually work in the real world. And the great part is they're not even competing with AI, ML, or software engineers. They are the foundation that everyone can build on top of. So why should you consider data engineering in 2026 and beyond? Well, there's three main reasons. One, the competition is significantly lower. LinkedIn data shows only 2.5 candidates per data engineering job in general. There's real demand here and not enough truly qualified people filling it. And two, the compensation is serious. Average US salaries sit around $130,000, but at top companies, it can go much higher. Third, this role is genuinely future-proof. Here's the thing. As AI gets more powerful, it will require more data, not less. And more AI adoption means more data pipelines, more real-time processing, more governance, and more data infrastructure. The skills that you build as a data engineer become more valuable as AI grows. You're not being replaced by AI because you're building what AI depends on. And here's something else worth knowing, by the way. Data engineering is one of the best entry points into AI engineering in general. The skills overlap significantly. You've got to learn Python, cloud platforms, and understanding how data flows through systems. Many AI engineers started as data engineers. 
Now, if you're interested in AI, but want a more stable foundation to build from, this is a real path without needing to get a PhD. The engineers who stand out in 2026 won't just understand models. They will understand the full stack from data infrastructure all the way to production AI systems. So now you might be asking, how do I actually get into data engineering? What do I need to learn? At a high level, you're looking at Python and SQL as some core technologies, but you will need to learn more. You'll need to understand cloud platforms when just data at scale, tools like Apache Spark, Airflow, and Databricks that show up in many job descriptions. And increasingly, companies want data engineers will understand how to build pipelines that feed into AI systems. Things like setting up vector databases in an efficient way and enabling real-time data streaming. I go into way more detail on all of this in my free roadmap. So if you're serious about this career path, grab that link from the description.